guys, that's from here, and you might have saw earlier today I did a video of a blind reaction to a MLP fan song called Who Walks in Your Dreams by the Brody Notion, which is a YouTube channel I absolutely love. And don't mind me drinking water while I record this. I'm thirsty, okay? It's like 30 degrees. Um, what is it? We're getting sidetracked on all the coolest fairy videos. Anyway, what I was about to say before I took a sip of this absolutely delightful water. Oh my goodness, why am I talking about my water? I was going to say that I love this song already. I listened to it so much already and I only heard it for the first time this morning. Why did I put it off so much? I just had other things to do and I kind of get sidetracked and... I make sure I'm talking about getting sidetracked as I get sidetracked. Okay, well, let's. Here's my challenge. Try not to get off topic for the whole for the rest of the video. If it was for the whole video, I've already failed. So let's make it the rest of the video. Okay, back, back on topic. I was wondering, what do the three, I mean, four orbs represent? In the comment section, the brony notion has stated that they don't represent anything in particular, but to keep it over ending, but. But that, mate, is basically an invitation for me to do a video. I know I don't usually do videos on fan works unless it's like reactions. Or that one time I did an absolutely terrible cover to the second Rembrandt opening. But I thought we could make a nice little exception because the dude was practically asking us to theorize about this by saying that they don't represent anything in particular. Well, I thought the video was about Luna. So... I then I got thinking about what makes Luna unique. She has the ability to dream walking though Celestia has also gained this ability in a royal problem. She is very she is a, a sort of emotionally unstable character. And since dreams are like memories and memories sort of help form your emotions in childhood, that was sort of the line I was thinking, but it didn't really lead to anything. Sure, she guards the ponies in their dreams, and they do in return, but who, is the, who do the orbs, the orbs represent the ponies, but what kind or who do they represent? But then, on the line of Luna's childhood and her personality, I just sort of went on a bit of a eternal rant about the history of Equestria. Clover the Clever, the Unites, and the other two, you know, Clover the Clever's more surprised. Celebrated, celebrated, what? Celebrated because, like, the memory stone thing and just being a star swell pupil. Hint, hint! And she helped unite Equestria. Then I remembered Star Swirl. He was probably still alive at the time of Equestria's foundings, and he was also a teacher to a young Celestia and Luna. But why don't we see him in a Hearts Wind Eve? Maybe he recently started apprenticing the young Celestia and Luna. Because they do state they were young in Season 7. So young they never met the other pillars. <coughs> so, but then Chloe the Clever helped establish the question. And it doesn't make sense that Celestia and Luna were alcorns by then. With the strength of earth ponies. A horn of ma and magical wielding cap capability. I can't get my words out today. And magic wielding capabilities of a unicorn. And the wings and flight of a pegstar. See where I'm going with this? You probably don't, but they were nearly being invented to control their incredible power at a time of their, of a question of findings. The tribes are still some tension against each other, just a bit of a grudge. The wounds haven't fully healed yet of all their fighting. And yeah. And then I saw made a connection with the Windigos, like Winter Moon Festival, Windigos, but that didn't lead anywhere. So I went back to the three tribes Earth, Unicorn, Pegasi. Celestia and Luna would help when unite them, because they're a combination of all three. The Alcorn. They helped unite Equestria. And although Celestia may be more celebrated, that is mostly due to Luna being more cold and distant. So, yeah. Then I thought, what if the orbs, the green, 
the blue, the red, and the yellow represent the different pony tribes. And now we're gonna go come for four. Like the blue would be Pegasi. That's is blue in the sky. A lot of weather elements like snow and rain, which they manipulate, are constantly like you know blue. The green would be Earth Pony. It's the Earth Ponies are uh, especially in the olden days were associated with land. They might even have some form of super strength and. They're just associated with the earth and green and you do find that a lot of nurses are earth ponies, a lot of that sort of thing are earth ponies, like greens I'd call it health. And I don't know where I'm going with this. What do you think about green? I'm definitely confident in this theory. Also, who would be unicorn then? The yellow or the red? Well, I think it would actually be the red. Because, hear me out. I know Celestia, who is magically gifted, magical aura is yellow. That's the why yellow isn't unicorn. Yellow symbolizes the birth of a new era. The birth of the sun seems to represent a new dawn. Dawn and a new beginning. The birth of new life, of new, of hope. That's what Celestia and the Alicorn race in general represented, which makes yellow Alicorn. And red can be unicorn, because unicorns often have magic tied to their emotions. Or, to some extent, not to that high of an extent, they can do extremely powerful magic whenever they want, but to a tiny bit of an extent, it is somewhat connected to their magic. Like, I doubt Twilight could destroy all of Ponyville in, like, one blast if she wasn't just a bit worked up. You know? But, and red is, like, a colour associated with emotions. And that's why there's four. Earth, Pegasi, uh, Unicorn, and Alicorn. The four. Because they are grateful, they are starting to show their gratefulness to Luna for the events of a heart to an E. Because Celestia and Luna would have brought the king together. And they're not only giving Luna credit for walking in through their dreams and protecting them from nightmares, but they're also giving her credit for bringing them together. So she sends dreams, confirm memories. And although none of these ponies except from Celestia and Luna would have been alive during that time, they probably wouldn't be alive at all because of the Wendigos if it weren't for the Alicorn race. Boom. And also check out the song, it's really good.